Hello, welcome to the video for what is the apply and receive damage nodes. This is going to be our quick little example. If we shoot the box on the right, you're going to notice we have an impact point indicated by our little square and the line trace goes all the way through. If we hit the box on the left, you'll notice on the top left, the health is going down by 100 every time I shoot it. And it's got the same thing. It's going to go ahead and use an impact point on the box. So let's go ahead and cover what damage type, sorry, applied damage is. It uses damage types. So apply damage is a helper function that is given to us by Epic. It's part of the gameplay statics library. Basically any pawn can have applied damage sent to it and any pawn can receive it if you override the function. Basically, how we would use it in my example here is when I push my left button, I'm simply doing a line trace forward by 300 using a just a little function to handle line tracing. We are going to go ahead and break whatever we hit out for our example. So we are going to use apply damage. Apply damage has one, two, three, four, five different inputs. And not all of them are required, as you can see. Basically, the only ones that are required is going to be the damaged actor. Technically, you could pass along zero for the damage. So, damaged actor is basically going to be whichever actor was hit or you want to apply damage to. In our case, we're using a line trace. So, whichever actor we hit, we're going to pass along as our damaged actor. Base damage will be the amount of damage you want to pass along in a float. And under this, we have our optional inputs. Event instigator. This is supposed to be basically who did the damage. Not what, but who. So it should be the controller for who did it. So if you're having a single player game, it'll be just the player controller. For damage causer, it is what caused the damage. Let's say your person has a grenade launcher. He fires the grenade. The controller your player is the instigator and the grenade is the damage causer itself. And then you have your damage type class, which I've covered in another video. Basically, this is just the damage type and it's passed along to the event received damage. Now, keep in mind, these are completely optional. These are only useful on the receive part if you're going to use them. These are the only parts that are required, damaged actor and base damage. Now, receiving damage. I've gone ahead and I have created a generic dummy box right here, which is just a cube with a box collision. That way we can shoot at it. And then we have our event any damage. Now, if I delete this, you're not going to find the event any damage in something, a, a normal spot. It's going to be one of these overrides here. Override right here, any damage. It's going to show up in your graph when you do that. And it's going to be, like I said, it's a built-in function built into the pawn. The other way is you can just right click and do damage and you'll find your events for any damage, point damage and radial damage down here. So how does this work? Basically, this is just a function that's called automatically if someone is applying damage and if you're receiving it. Now, any damage can receive any damage event. It can receive any of the damage events. It's not specific to the radial point or damage event. It's your generic damage catch-all. Down here, I just simply, simply have a simple function that's outputting the health after we go ahead and subtract the damage type. As you notice here, I'm not using the damage type instigated by or damage causer. You would obviously use these if you wanted to. Maybe you need to break apart the damage type and apply a special function or method to it. Maybe you want to find out what type of damage it is and do something specific. Maybe you want to find out who instigated the damage and find out if they can even do it. And maybe you want to find out who caused it, what caused or who caused the damage and do something specific. And these are just simple passed along variables. You can go ahead and promote it to a variable and do things with it. Or they have the different variables that come with it in terms of what they are. So that is what the any damage does. Now, in our example here, if you notice when I shoot my left box, 
we are applying 100 points of damage to it. It's receiving it, and it's subtracting it from its total life. Now the box on the right is a destructible mesh, and if you notice, nothing is happening. A destructible mesh is not going to be affected by an applied damage node. It's going to need one of the other nodes, the radial or the point damage, in order for it to be damaged. So keep that in mind. Applied damage is intended to be used for specific damage. You don't know where it came from. There's no radius to it. It's just damage. Maybe, for example, someone was walking along the ground. They walked into fire, and you want to apply damage. Your fire trap can use the generic applied damage, and then anything inside of it would receive the damage, and there you go. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.